Hello, and welcome to Ward Talk, CTN's look at the political scene in Ann Arbor. I'm your host, Bonnie Gabowitz. We'll be discussing issues and solutions with the city council members from our five wards each month. Joining us this month is Lynn Song from Ward 2. Welcome, Lynn. This is your first time on the show. It is. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being patient with me. Yes. Well, I know you council members are extremely busy with all the different things going on. Mm -hmm. So let's just start with getting to know you first. Sure. Um, what interested you in being involved in the city government, and uh, what, what was your connection to this? Sure. Uh, I, I was on the library board from 2016 to 2020. And in 2020, I was trying to think about where I could go next if I wanted to serve another term as library board president or kind of work on the issues that I saw that were pressing in the city. Um, and I was really excited to run in a presidential year and, and just see, see what my chances were uh, to address city issues. I served on a number of nonprofit boards for uh, um, a neutral zone, Avalon housing, um, I have my own family foundation, so I'm really close to, to yeah. the issues in town. And, and how long have you been living in Ann Arbor? I came here as an undergrad, so uh, I started school here in 95, finished in 98. Uh, I probably waitressed for you at Palio's, or if you remember Eastern Accents, the bakery downtown. I worked there, and that's where I met my husband. So I've been here um, as a student, as a community student, as a graduate since 95. Yeah, okay, so you, you understand the whole college scene as well. Yes, Great. yes, and I did my MSW too after, yeah. after I was married. Yeah, and uh, do you have a professional background as well? It, is it nonprofit or is it just administration? Mostly nonprofit. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked on anti trafficking and international adoption for quite a while, so I worked uh, with uh, the State Department, FBI, State Attorney Generals. We helped ratify, there was an organization in DC, we helped ratify the Hague Convention on Intercountry Adoption. Um, so mostly investigating an adoption fraud. Uh, that work was pretty hectic, um, so I, I kind of tried to see what I could do more closely at home and everything from being PTO president for my, for my kids' schools to, again, nonprofit board work. Um, so you have a lot of experience in different, ac actually different aspects of uh, life he, uh, here in Ann Arbor. Right. So let's talk about your ward in particular, mm -hmm. ward number two. Uh, that I know there's been a lot of work with the TC1 project. Right. So can, can you update us on that? We haven't talked about that in a couple of months. Sure. Uh, so a TC1 is a new rezoning um, designation that we've seen already implemented in other parts of the city, uh, more, more towards the mall and uh, along um, Stadium and um, Maple. So what we're trying to do is see where we can do it, the last areas, which would be Plymouth and Washtenaw. The idea is to encourage more dense development along very, very busy transportation corridors. We still have over 80,000 daily commuters coming in and out of the city. Um, and if we can help folks live more closely to where they work uh, and not become commuters, uh, I think it would, it would really improve um, traffic, it would improve affordability, um, it would meet our environmental mm -hmm. goals. And are there areas that are available for development? Um, probably, it's not that many, yeah. uh, not that many, but there are opportunities. So a good example, uh, I know Council Member Chris Watson has spoken about this too, is uh, the infill project. So there's one infill project uh, on the Plymouth Road Mall area where there's the Starbucks, uh, I think a massage place. Uh, that used to be the front parking lot in front of um, where uh, Flim Flam used to be, but is now Songbird Cafe, uh, where the library used to be, but now is, you know, home market and rapport in the back behind there. So being able to introduce more businesses and actually two-story businesses, potentially with housing above that, um, hasn't actually uh, been a negative for those neighboring businesses. That was the fear initially mm -hmm. when it was built. Um, would, would you call that neighborhood also the north campus of the, of the university? That's right, yeah, that's okay. right, because it's right across from where Pfizer used to be. Mm -hmm. And now that the I was just there yesterday oh, at, yeah. at the bookstore, yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, it stretches up to that point. So what we're really looking to do, and I think it's really timely because uh, the university just launched a plan to redevelop. So their campus 2050 plan, uh, campus I think 2030 plan, there are two plans. 
and how they'll uh, develop their parcels along Plymouth Road especially will be really important to follow because where the NCRB is, the former Pfizer building area, one of the ideas they have is actually to put a, a hotel, um, a hotel conference center across from there. Um, and that would be great. You know, we're really hurting for more meeting space mm. in, in Ann Arbor. Yeah, I know a, a lot of, uh, there are a, a lot of entities that have people coming in for short terms for whatever. I know performances and conferences mm -hmm. and what, whatever. Yes, so, I used to be on UM UMS's board. Yeah. So we're, we, UMS was always looking for space too. Right, yeah. right, mm -hmm. right. And uh, in terms of uh, what's happening, um, there, there's more than one TC development, right? But it's TC one that is specific in your particular neighborhood, in your ward? Well, it's, uh, it aligns with what we've been doing by the mall uh, along um, in War 3, 4, uh, off of Maple, Jackson area. So mm -hmm. for this to be the last part of the city to get on board with this, it'll look different, but the idea is that we will be able to control against projects that we don't want, which mm -hmm. are, you know, one purpose, one story, um, more mini malls. You know, we, we have room to build up. Mm -hmm. uh, we have oh, a good example actually is um, on Plymouth and Green, uh, Kitty Corner to Bushes, there's where Sweetwaters is, mm -hmm. and there's housing above Sweetwaters, housing above Banditos. So that's the kind of development you're looking for, maybe yes. commercial uh, uh, in the lower floors and then housing on above upstairs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, talking about housing, I know this is a concern for the whole city. Um, in terms of the winter weather and mm -hmm. people who don't have housing, uh, what is your ward doing about that? So our ward really only has one public housing um, uh, um, uh, uh, area, and that's community, where Community Action Network, a nonprofit, manages that, uh, and that's through our Ann Arbor Housing Commission. Mm -hmm. um, Green Baxter Court, which is the neighborhood. Uh, uh, feeds into King School, into Clegg, where my children go to. Um, and it's kind of unfortunate that we don't have two or three more communities like this in our ward. Uh, and I really think it speaks to how we have our um, kind of communities in different areas, either downtown with Lori Terrace or, um, uh, we, well, we've got Lori, we've got um, Naple, Maple Manor, or Miller Manor, um, and then we have uh, another neighborhood on, in Ward 3, um, where also Community Action Network helps, helps organize neighborhoods. I, I, really, I really wish Ward 2 could accommodate more communities like this, more mm -hmm. Section 8 housing. Mm -hmm. um, but it is a concern uh, in that, you know, in our neighborhoods, we do have a number of social workers, teachers, uh, folks who work in social services um, with organizations like Jewish Family Services. Uh, who so you work together to s see if you can get some kind of vouchers um, uh, or, or just to help. Is, is this like a short term situation for people? If homelessness? You, uh, well, in terms of being tr trying to help these people. You're, you're looking to have people placed in a rental apartment, let's say for a, a year, for a right. lease. So that's really short term and that doesn't mm. solve our housing crisis. We actually mm. need to build units for people to live in, mm -hmm. uh, to rent long term in. Um, our housing crisis is really coming out of lack of supply. Homelessness is directly related to lack of supply of housing. Um, and also COVID, ARPA funding, federally funding expiring. Mm. So the evictions that we're seeing um, and- So there's no eviction protection anymore. No, mm. not, not that's the COVID. Uh, we had actually a moratorium mm. on uh, evictions that the federal, the federal government helped mm. us with and helped us with paying for rent in the county um, and that has expired. Yeah. So what we're seeing in, in War II, we're not seeing a significant impact on homelessness and um, vouchers being distributed because there's just lack of supply. We do see some more residents coming into the McKinley properties with Section 8 vouchers, and that's a good thing um, because the, the rate of homelessness that we're seeing increase from last year, this time last year, to 
this time this year has doubled when it comes to the number of families who are homeless. Mm -hmm. So last year we had about 300 families and now we have close to 700 families mm -hmm. who are homeless. Okay. All right. Well, that will be a topic we'll continue to be covering each month. Mm -hmm. uh, just a quick mention on the bicentennial this year. It is now 2024. Mm -hmm. We have a, a big celebration that will be going on all year round. This month we'll be starting uh, with a with the official celebration, right. but I see that on uh, your website you, you'll have a calendar of all the different events happening throughout the city right. throughout the year. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, uh, tell us a little more about that, just that it starts with the big celebration this month, right? This month, this Friday, there's a kickoff. Destination Ann Arbor's hosting that. Um, I plan to be there. It'll be I think it'll be a really good year to talk about how Ann Arbor's changed and, and the changes that need to come. Um, this is also the year of the dragon. So for Asian Americans are the largest minority population in Ann Arbor. I think we're at 17 or 18 percent of the community. Um, and year of the dragon is kind of like the completion of the 12 year zodiac cycle. Uh, so for me, and I know community members, I know this is a significant year. Um, so, you know, hopefully this is a good year to talk about this community, how diverse it is, uh, what are we celebrating, what else we can work on. And, and with all the concerns we have, we want to also look at what we've accomplished and what the positive aspects of the city is right. now, especially looking back at how it was in the past. Oh, well, I go through the archives, yeah. through the library. Yeah. It's, it's amazing the things that have happened here in Ann Arbor, especially okay. when it comes to housing, always addressing you know, these surges in population after every war, uh, university. Well, when we come back, we have quite a few other topics to discuss. Sure. We want to hear from you, so please email us questions to ctn at a2gov.org or tweet us at hashtag CTN in Arbor. We're taking a break now, and we'll be coming back with more from Ward Talk. We want everyone in Ann Arbor to be safe. Which is why Ann Arbor has a law requiring drivers to be five feet while passing bicyclists, pedestrians, or wheelchairs traveling on the road. Most traffic lanes within the city are at least 10 feet wide, so give half a lane width of space for safety's sake. This is a good way to measure how much space is required. And if it isn't safe to pass, don't. Be cautious, be patient, and most of all, be safe. This is Bonnie Gabowitz. We're continuing with War Talk. 
I'm speaking this time with Lynn Song from Ward 2. Uh, Lynn, we were talking about um, the housing crisis, and I just wanted to continue that subject a little bit more and some of the other ramifications of the economics going on. Uh, uh, we do have a lot of uh, organizations that are trying to help work with the city and help uh, people in need, especially as you mentioned, um, there's an increase in people who need more help, right. either with housing or with food, you know, food or both, right. um, trying to get jobs. And uh, uh, some of the organizations have reached out. Uh, and I, I know there's one you were particularly uh, involved with. That's the Jewish Family Services. Right, right. And what's happening with them? How are they helping? So JFS is the agency in Washington County that resettles refugees. Um, my parents were refugees from Vietnam and Laos. Both are ethnic Vietnamese. So this is a cause that's, that's very close to, to me. Um, there is a, an emergent situation where the organization is looking to resettle a family of seven with special needs ch uh, children. So we're looking for a house with four to, four to five bedrooms with a, um, a wheelchair access, a wheelchair mm -hmm. ramp. Um, it'd be great if we could find in the Ipsy Ann Arbor area so that the children can receive the services that they need. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if folks are familiar with the resettlement process, but it means everything from trauma therapy language assistance, finding a job, transportation. It's a pretty intense process to welcome, a, welcome our new Americans here. Okay, and, and um, also I know a, a lot of people are volunteers that help out with that organization. That's right, well. we have, there's a food right. pantry, a halal food pantry. What I love about Jewish Family Services is that it's, a it's, a, it's an organization that meets a variety of needs and has worked throughout the pandemic so that uh, all community me members, including seniors, they also have a senior meal program, um, are cared for. So it would be worth for people to go on their website and see what the services are and what the volunteer opportunities are like. Yes. Okay. And the other aspect of these new conditions is uh, the need for um, feeding families. Yes. And I've seen, uh, uh, even in my emails, that organizations are reaching out asking for people to donate uh, supplies for food containers, water bottles, uh, all kinds of food uh, and su you know, supplements that go with it right. um, because the food pantries and the places that are serving meals are being inundated with increased uh, people coming through their doors. That's right, that's uh, right. I and, just had a uh, call with the, shel the Shelter Association, the group that runs Delanis downtown. That's a county, county run, but has, it's also an independent nonprofit. We're seeing an increased number of um, seniors, homeless seniors too. Food costs are so high. Uh, if, we, if there's a way to donate food, to, do to volunteer to cook, mm. uh, to deliver, um, there's Ipsy Meals on Wheels, there's Delanas, there's, there's um, many ways to become involved. There's also our warming shelters. Mm -hmm. so, now, is this information that, that can be found on the website for if someone wants to help someone in need to get information? That's, that's a good resource. I think a good resource is the Washtenaw Housing Alliance. So that's a, a membership group uh, that includes Delanas, Shelter Association, Avalon Housing, uh, the, our religious institutions who volunteer and actually man and provide mm -hmm. spaces for warming shelters. Mm -hmm. So Washington Housing Alliance is the central place for that. Mm. Okay, now I know it's a little ways down the line. Sure. This, is, this is now January, uh, but we need to talk about the election coming up uh, because uh, voters need to be aware of what they need to do to make sure that they're registered and they have no problems getting their votes in. So right. tell us a little bit also about the election center that is being planned. That's down the road a couple of years, right? No, it's this year. We oh, are, this is part of the, so there was some anxiety around um, trying to chase down state funding before the end of the last legislative session last, last year and asking for state funding. Um, it was three city clerks who petitioned for funding election centers. It was Ann Arbor, uh, Grand Rapids, and Lansing. 
all city clerks came together and said, please, we need, uh, I think th the ask was for $3 million for each city to acquire property to have election centers. Now, is this federal or state you're state, for? State. State, okay. So uh, we didn't get three, but we got one. One is better than nothing. So <laughs> uh, we now are able to acquire property um, so that our city clerk has space to process absentee ballots. Um, in 2018, I was on the executive committee of a group that helped push through a state proposition so the absentee ballots could be more uh, available. Um, promote the vote was, was really essential as we came into the 2020 elections, and now here we are in 2024. Uh, in 2020, folks were, you know, we were in the middle of COVID, absentee ballots were really important for mm -hmm. folks to access voting. Uh, I think, and here we are with another surge, but I hope it's a practice for folks to register for your absentee ballot by now. Right, and this, uh, right now, uh, will the polls be changed at all, or will they, people get notices you of should poll, be getting notices. polling places changed? Yeah, the yeah. couple have changed. So here in Ward 2, um, we, used to there was one polling station is now actually merged with at king elementary so we had a polling station at the methodist church off of green and glazier they're no longer participating as an election site um so now whoever has gone to vote that site is will now have to go so, to so people really need to pay attention to where this with the voting place yes yeah. please yeah okay and you've uh You've been um, involved in some com commissions and committees. I know you wear more than one hat as a council member. Um, uh, let's talk about the armed response project first before we get into that, because sure. I know we've been talking for months about having some kind of available intervention to support people who need uh, it are an emergency situation, but it's not a situation that police need with their, you know, with with their guns in their holsters. It's it's an emergency. It could be a mental health emergency, right. uh, or a Substance physical abuse. health emergency. Right. And I know you were you had looked for um, some kind of pr company that would come in and offer a program where they would come in and respond to these emergency calls without right. having to involve the police. But there were one uh, company entity that responded didn't right. really come up to what you needed. And um, so I'm curious to know, uh, just briefly, you know, what didn't they offer that was so important that you turned it down? And number two, how do you find another entity to come up with another offer because it sounds like a tremendous, uh, you know, it's, it's something that's going to be really hard to do. But it's not unheard of. So what we had based this, this need uh, on this was on existing programs in other cities, uh, specifically Cahoots in Eugene, Oregon. But there are also uh, similar programs in El Paso, um, uh, Harris, Harris County, uh, Dallas, Houston, where what, what you see is um, through the 911 center or a separate number, folks who are experiencing some sort of crisis have the option for a non-police response. Um, I think if we can just backtrack a little bit on the history of this, this came out of a resolution. I was a co-sponsor on this. Uh, Mayor Taylor actually was the uh, initiated this. Um, I came on board and I asked if we could bring on some voices speci specifically from the public health angle. Uh, City Council, prior to me being elected, had voted in favor of a resolution that said racism is a public health crisis. And I felt like this was a connection to this. And it also spoke to what we were experiencing with COVID, right? And after George Floyd's murder, what, what does it mean when Ann Arbor says Black Lives Matter? Mm. Um, in this resolution, I pulled a U of M public health professor, I pulled uh, the chair of our police oversight commission at the time to help inform the resolution so that we can actually bring Ann Arbor's voices to this versus just political heads mm -hmm. who want better for the city. And then out of that, uh, we voted th that through and then it came through the budget cycle and then it came through uh, ARPA budget. So we have two sources of funding for this effort now. 
which should really demonstrate the political will and our commitment from city staff to actually put this into, into action. So it, it shows that there's a lot of support for, for yes. this. And there's a timeline. So with the ARPA federal funding, we have to dedicate it and spend it by 2026. Mm. With the general funding, you know, that's, that's a different matter. Um, but I, I think the confusion in the community is that when we put out the RFP, that kind of ends the political process. So the political will is there, the budgeting is there, now it goes to the staff. Uh, and our city administrator and our city attorneys are really the ones who oversee that because if electeds intervened in RFP, then that's, that's corruption. Right. You know, we, right. we, can't, we can't show our biases. We can't direct our, our, our executive to show favoritism or, uh, or, or refuse to acknowledge you know, certain bids. It's, it's a bid to actually become a service provider for the city. Uh, this particular RFP that was submitted um, by you know, known leaders and, and, and community leaders that we know and care for and work for in many other ways uh, did not meet the city's expectations. But that's not to say that they can't submit again. Um, and that's not to say that uh, it's, it, I don't know how to, it's not personal. <laughs> it's, right, right. Well, it's, it's a process, it's bureaucracy, you right, know. Right. Um, but so I, I be, understand be that one of the things that you wanted that wasn't offered was that it, there'd be 24 hour uh, service available, including weekends. And that's not what they were offering, but, but that's what you really needed. It's what we needed, but it also speaks to the capacity for an organization to do this uh, without experience. Mm -hmm. and that, but we also don't have this experience. We're all learning and doing at the same time, right? Um, so it really, we really need to look at these other cities and see how they've done this. And one thing that stood out for me when I had initially um, really advocated for this was the collaboration. So it wasn't just the service provider contracting with the city. In other areas, um, in Texas, for example, they had the local medical center providers, so the local hospitals, local philanthropy, the community foundation, and the municipality coming all together to help fund and staff and coordinate responses. Mm -hmm. Here, we're kind of doing it in a way where we've gone through community engagement to secure the funding and know what the community wants, which is the 24-7 response. Okay, so, yeah. so the bottom line is this isn't finished. It's not finished. It's not finished. Uh, this will be the continuing story, and we still have a little time to get this worked out. And the city works within the city, city budget, city right, staff. Right. I think the dreams of organizers is to make this a county-wide effort. So uh, hopefully we can hear more from our county officials and state officials to see how funding might come through that way. Okay, and in the 30 seconds we have left, uh, time just flew. Uh, just give me your personal take on your experience uh, being on the council. Um, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been an honor. I never thought I would run for, on it, for office. Honestly, I, I thought I'd just work in the nonprofit sector, be a full-time parent, um, and I've learned so much. Um, I feel like I'm a geek in every way. I'm a policy geek. You know, I, I've always asked, uh, how, how do things work? Who are making, who's making decisions and who's missing from the table? Mm -hmm. And I feel like the past couple of years, we've been able to bring up voices and faces on council and local elections who have, we've really been missing. Okay. So it sounds like you're very grateful for this opportunity. I want to thank you for your service. Oh, thank you for having me. And good me. luck with everything. Thank you. Thank you so much. Remember to join us for a new episode every month. We want to hear from you, so please email us at ctn at a2gov.org. Attention, Word Talk. You can also follow CTN and ask questions on Twitter at mm -hmm. twitter.com slash CTN in Arbor. We'll make sure to include your questions. To watch this and all of CTN's other programming, head online to youtube.com slash CTN in Arbor. For Ward Talk, I'm Bonnie Gabowitz. Until next month.